Well, good morning, Grace Fellowship. Great to be with you this morning. My heart was stirring as we worshiped. Uh, this, God shows up in this place, and uh, I'm, I like worshiping with you guys. All right, I want to start with a story uh, that comes out of Yale University. In 2018, Yale University offered uh, a course, an undergraduate course, that was to become its most famous and most taken by the most students course ever in its history, and actually ever in the history of any university anywhere. So in January 2018, this course came out, and on the morning that it came out, 300 students signed up. Within three days later, 600 students had signed up. And within three days after that, 1,200 students had signed up for this course. That was over a quarter of the entire Yale University student body signed up for uh, the course. There was no lecture hall large enough to hold them all. And so they put 800 of the students in the university chapel and they put 400 of the students in overflow rooms and live streamed it uh, into there. The class was a smashing success. In the years that followed, they decided to open up this course for people outside of Yale University. And to date, to date, over 3.3 million people have taken this course. 3.3 million people. And what was the topic of this course? Was it a course on chemical engineering? No, but it should have been. Was it a course on losing weight or exercise or marriage or sex? No. This most popular Yale University course was a course on happiness. Happiness. Everybody wants to be happy. Matter of fact, a study was conducted across the world of what's the most common goal that people have. And the number one goal that people choose is to pursue happiness all over the world. Uh, Happy people enjoy a superior uh, work performance, a bolstered immune system, and higher odds of a strong marriage. Everybody wants to be happy. And yet, only one-third of people surveyed indicated and said that they actually are happy. Today, we start a new sermon series called Book Club, where we're going to survey six of my favorite books on the topics of happiness, anxiety, heaven, and some other topics, uh, one per Sunday here in big church in this room. And book number one that we're starting with is Max Lucado's book, How Happiness Happens. I think we have a picture of that we can throw up on the screen. Uh, Yeah, there's the book uh, right there. I highly recommend this excellent book by Max Lucado. Uh, We have a dozen or so copies in the back in the lobby there for cost. Uh, We're not trying to make any money. I just want to make it available to you. Uh, I think most people will order it online if you choose to order it. I'm convinced that this book is way better than the Yale University course because this book is based on the Bible. It's based on God's Word. And as many of you consider uh, coming together to take a one-time, short-term book club, uh, maybe you would consider this book is the book that you circle up with friends or a small group to go uh, in deep uh, with. I'm going to survey six books in this room every Sunday morning, one book per Sunday uh, here in Big Church. Uh, I encourage you during those six weeks to pick one of the six books that's listed there in your worship guide and go deep with some friends or family or a small group. And today's would be a great one to do that with. So let's say a prayer and then we're going to dive into our Bible study on happiness. Let's pray together. Father, Jesus, Holy Spirit, we dedicate these six weeks to you as we take books that have been written by some of your servants that help us get into the Bible and what the Bible has to say about happiness and anxiety in heaven and other topics. And God, we're asking uh, for you to meet with us as we study the Bible verses in these, uh, in these books. And, uh, and Lord, would you show us your view of happiness? And so speak, Lord, your servants are listening. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, here we go. I can summarize the entire Max Lucado, How Happiness Happens book in just one sentence. And I put the sentence right there in your notes. So if you turn to page three of your worship guide, you'll find some sermon notes. I encourage you to grab a pen, follow along, take some notes. Or you can download our 
uh, Grace Fellowship app, and you can find the sermon notes digitally on the app. Follow along digitally. You can fill in the blanks digitally, and you can have a digital copy of it. Here it is, the whole message of the book by Max Lucado in one sentence. It's in the box there in your notes. Here's the whole thesis. Happiness happens as you give it away. So give it away is the fill in the blank there in your notes. Whole book can be summarized this way. Happiness happens as you give it away. Let me show this to you in the Bible. So if you've got a Bible, turn with me in your Bible to the book of Acts. Acts is in the New Testament. It's about 70% of the way through your Bible. Uh, in the New Testament, you've got Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans. If you get to Romans, you've gone too far. We're going to look at Acts chapter 20 uh, together. By the way, let me encourage you to bring a Bible with you every single Sunday during this series and actually for the rest of your life. Because every single Sunday, I'm going to say the same thing. Turn with me in your Bible too, and we're going to look up a Bible passage together and study it together. I'll help you get to know this book if you bring your Bible with you. And if you don't own a Bible, it would be our privilege and honor to give you one for free. Out there in the lobby at the welcome desk is we got literally about 100 ESV English Standard Version Bibles. We'd love to give you one of those for free if you don't have a, a Bible. All right, here we go. Acts chapter 20, verse 35. The Apostle Paul is giving his farewell address to the leaders of the church at Ephesus. And at the very end of his farewell address, he says, verse 35. Look at it with me. Verse 35. In all things, I have shown you that by working hard in this way, we must help the weak and remember the words of the Lord Jesus. How he himself said, and now he's quoting Jesus, it is more blessed to give than to receive. It is more blessed to give than to receive. You're more blessed when you are giving than when you are receiving. And in the Bible, the word for blessed literally means happy. So in other words, you're more happy when you're giving than when you are receiving. Happiness happens when you give it away. Here's a quote straight out of Max Lucado's book. I put it in your notes. Lucado says, are you seeking joy? Then do good for someone else. When you give to others, it has a boomerang effect. Happiness happens when we give it away. It's more blessed to give than it is to receive. Now, let me just pause for a moment before we go any further. And I want to speak to my friends who uh, struggle with depression, anxiety, and mental illness. I'm getting ready to talk for the next 30 minutes about happiness and how to have happiness. And as I do so, I want to be super careful that I be sensitive to my friends who struggle with depression and mental illness. I do not want to come across as glib or with some kind of easy fixism. Depression, anxiety, mental illness are incredibly complex and difficult and painful. And some of you have been struggling with these things for decades. And I am not proposing that my thir little 30-minute talk here is going to somehow give a quick fix for chronic depression. That being said, I am convinced that the principles that we're going to share together from the Bible this morning are true. And that they will increase happiness. Let me share with you an analogy that I believe God's given to me to help understand what I'm saying about this topic. Uh, I want you to imagine with me a person who has been through a horrible house fire and now has 80% of their body burned. Burn injuries are excruciatingly painful. So let me ask you a question. Can a person with burn injuries across 80% of their body apply today's Bible principles and increase their happiness? And my answer is absolutely yes. A person with burn injuries can apply today's biblical principles and can increase their happiness. But let me be clear. Applying today's Bible principles will not cause the burn injuries to go away. They will still have excruciating pain from their burn injuries. But even in the midst of that painfulness, a person with burn injuries can increase their happiness by applying the Bible principles that we're going to look at today. 
as it is with the burn victim, so it is with a person who is suffering from chronic depression, anxiety, or mental illness. Applying today's Bible principles is not a quick fix for chronic depression. It will not make the depression miraculously and instantly go away. But a person with mental illness can increase their happiness by applying today's Bible principles. It won't make the burn injuries miraculously go away, but they do increase happiness. All right, with that as my disclaimer, look at your notes and let's dive into 10 ways to increase happiness by giving happiness away. Happiness happens as you give it away. Here are 10 ways to give away happiness to other people. And all 10 of these things I'm gonna share with you come out of Bible passages that are called the one another passages. Like throughout the New Testament, there's, there's, there's more than 10. There's all these Bible passages that talk about one another. Uh, do this to one another. Do that to one another. The Bible frequently uses this one another phrase. And so we're going to study 10 of these one another passages. And then at the very end, I'm going to challenge you to take the happiness challenge. And I'm, gonna, I'm giving you this toolbox full of 10 one another's. And at the end, I'm going to challenge you to take the happiness challenge, which is going to be to take these one another's and implement them as a way of giving happiness to other people. And watch and see if your happiness doesn't go up as well. All right, here we go. 10 ways to increase my happiness by giving it away. A study of 10 one another Bible passages. Here we go, number one. Happiness happens as I encourage others. So the fill in the blank there is the word encourage. Happiness happens as I encourage others. Look at the first one another passage. I put it in your notes. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 says, Therefore, here it is, encourage one another. Encourage one another and build one another up. Look what John Gottman says about this. He says, Healthy homes enjoy a positive to negative ratio of 5 to 1. In other words, in healthy homes, for every negative comment or criticism, there are five acts or words of encouragement. Listen to the story of a man by the name of Johnny Barnes, who many consider to be the happiest man in the world. Listen to this. It's 6 a.m. in Hamilton, Bermuda. 92-year-old Johnny Barnes stands on the edge of a roundabout and waves at people as they drive past. He's been there since 4 a.m. He'll be there until 10 a.m. He's not asking for money or begging for food. He's not protesting, complaining, picketing, or loitering. He's making people happy. He wears a straw hat and a salty beard. His eyes are bright, teeth white, and skin leathery and dark. The years have bent his back and slowed his step, but they have not siphoned his joy. He waves with both hands extended in front of him. His wrists turn from side to side as if they were adjusting the volume on a soundboard. He pulls back his right hand to retrieve a kiss and blow it in the direction of a taxi driver or a commuter. I love you, he shouts. I love you forever. Hello there, darling. I love you. And they love him. Bermudians call him Mr. Happy Man. They route their morning commute just to see him. If Johnny's not standing in his spot, people call up the radio station to make sure he's okay. If he happens to miss acknowledging some commuters, they'll often circle the roundabout until he waves at them. One morning, a cranky woman determined not to make eye contact with him. She wanted to wallow in her bad mood, but she ended up looking his way, and when he smiled, she smiled. Another sour attitude bites the dust. Johnny's philosophy is simple. We human beings got to learn how to love one another. One of the greatest joys that can come to an individual is when you're doing something to encourage others. Watch this video that shows Mr. Happy Man. Watch this. Good morning. How are you? I love it. I love it. I love it. Hey, David. Fine, thank you. Beautiful day. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Have a lovely day. Have a good day. Have a good day. Have a good day. Good morning. I love. I love. I love. Okay, baby. I love. I love. I love. I love. Have a good day. Have a good day. Good morning. Don't forget, I love you. I love you. Isn't that awesome? This is awesome. He was 92 years old when you saw him right there. 
uh, he's actually passed away. He passed away at the age of 93. And so Bermuda put up a statue in the roundabout section where he used to stand. Let's look at that picture. There he is, Mr. Happy Man right there. Yeah. Listen, happiness happens as you give it away. And when you encourage other people, it has a boomerang effect and comes back to you in happiness. All right, number two, how does happiness happen? Number two, happiness happens as I'm patient with others. So the next fill in the blank there is the word patient. Happiness happens as I'm patient with others. Here comes another one another Bible passage. Ephesians chapter four, there in your notes. Be patient bearing with one another in love. Look at what Max Lucado says about this. He says, happiness is less an emotion and more a decision, a decision to bear with one another. Life is too precious and brief to be spent in a huff. Cut people some slack, ease up, reduce your number of peeves and be patient with people. The world for all its quirky people is a wonderful place to live. The sooner we can find the beauty, the happier we will be. One of my faith heroes is a man by the name of Dwight Moody, who years ago started a church in Chicago and a college in Chicago, known today as the Moody Bible Institute. He was incredibly successful as an evangelist and as a Bible teacher, but he was also very humble and he was very gracious toward other people. He lived the verse that we just read, be patient with one another, bearing with one another in love. One time he said, right now I'm, I'm having so much trouble with Dwight Moody that I don't have time to find fault with the other fellow. <laughs> Be patient with one another, bearing with one another in love. Number three, how does happiness happen? Number three, happiness happens as I regard other people as important. So the next fill in the blank there is the word important. Happiness happens as I regard other people as important. Look at the Philippians 2 scripture there in your notes. The Bible says, do nothing from rivalry or conceit. Here it is. But in humility, count one another more significant than yourself. In humility, count others more significant than yourselves. Look what Max Lucado says about this. He says, happy are the unentitled. Expecting the applause of others is a fool's enterprise. Do yourself a favor and assume nothing. If you go unnoticed, you won't be surprised. If you are noticed, you can celebrate. Here's a helpful exercise that can turn your focus off yourself and onto others. During the next 24 hours, make it your aim to celebrate everything good that happens to someone else. In the mid-1930s, there was an instructor at the YMCA who pitched an idea for a class to teach at the YMCA. He pitched the idea to his supervisor. The class was going to be based on some principles he had learned while working as a salesman in Missouri. The YMCA directors could not afford to pay him the regular $2 a night fee, so he agreed to teach it on a commission basis. Within a couple of years, the course was so popular that the instructor was earning $30 a night, mid-1930s, instead of $2. A publishing executive heard the messages and encouraged the instructor to compile them into a book. Dale Carnegie did, and his book, How to Win Friends and Influence People, stayed on the New York Times bestseller list for over a decade. What is the message of this book? Simply regard other people as important. Regard other people as important. The chapter, The Big Secret of Dealing with People, urges readers to be hearty in your approbation and lavish in your praise. Happiness happens as you give it away. Happiness happens as you regard other people as important. Number four, how does happiness happen? Number four, happiness happens as I greet others. So the next fill in the blank there is greet. Happiness happens as I greet others. Uh, Here comes another one another passage. Romans 16, greet others one another. That's what uh, Johnny Barnes, the happy man, was doing. He was just greeting people in the roundabout, encouraging them. Look at what Max Lucado says about this. He says, what is small to you may be huge to somebody else. A greeting in its purest sense is a gesture of goodwill. When you greet someone with a friendly hello or a hug or a warm handshake, 
they benefit and you benefit. And Jesus said, when you love my kids, you're loving me. There's a story about an ex-convict from Darlington, England. He had just been released after three years in prison when he happened to pass the mayor of Darlington on the street. Expecting nothing more than cold ostracism from the public, the ex-convict didn't know how to respond when the mayor paused, tipped his hat, and said in a cheery tone, Hello, I'm glad to see you. How are you? The ex-prisoner mumbled a response and then went on his way. The city mayor thought nothing of it until years later, the two accidentally met in another city. The mayor didn't remember the man, but the man had never forgotten the mayor. The ex-convict said, I want to thank you for what you did for me when I came out of prison. What did I do for you? Asked the mayor. You spoke a kind word to me and it changed my life. What is small to you may be huge to somebody else. Happiness happens when you give it away. Give away a greeting with a smile. All right, number five. Happiness happens as I pray for others. So the next fill in the blank there is the word pray. Happiness happens as I pray for others. Look at the James 5 scripture in your notes. Pray for one another. There's another one another scripture. Pray for one another. Max Lucado says, nothing activates happiness like intercessory ministry, praying for other people. One of the greatest gifts that you can give to somebody else is the gift of praying for them, bringing them and their needs before the throne of the God of the universe. The spirit of prayer is essentially the spirit of love. Intercession is simply love at prayer. Every Sunday, you and I have an opportunity to pray for somebody else. On page two of our worship guide, every single Sunday, we reprint the handwritten request that somebody else wrote last Sunday on their connection card. Um, and now it showed up for you to pray for. Pray for one another. And I just invite you to take that prayer assignment seriously each week to pray for that person right here in your seat in church, but then also to take that home with you and over the coming days to uh, pray for that person. Happiness happens as you pray for other people. My mom was one of the happiest people I know, and I believe one of the reasons she was so happy is because she just prayed for tons and tons and tons of people. For those of you who've never met my mom, uh, she was the quiet matriarch of Grace Fellowship, and she passed away three years ago. She and my dad were on the original startup team uh, back in 1996 that helped start uh, Grace Fellowship. And no one knew more people's names than my mom. She would hang out in the church lobby after church and she would just walk around and introduce herself to people and get to know people and talk with them. And inevitably, people would share things with her and then she'd say, hey, could I just pause and say a prayer with you right now, right here in the lobby? They'd always say yes. And then she would just pray over them. And then she'd go home and she'd remember their name and she would pray for them during the week. And then the next Sunday she would go and find that person and she'd ask for an update and she'd pray for them again. <laughs> Happiness happens as you give it away. My mom frequently gave away the gift of prayer and she was one of the happiest people I know. I'm thinking about a man by the name of Mike Wilson who frequently sends me prayer texts asking how he can pray for me. He just frequently gives away the gift of prayer. He's actually a prayer text maniac. <laughs> and he's a joyful, joyful person. Happiness happens as you give it away. I'm thinking of a woman named Patty who lives in a nursing home and rather than wallow in self-pity in, in the nursing home, she chooses to go around from room to room to room to room in the nursing home, checking up on people, asking them if she can pray uh, for them. Patty's the happiest person in the whole nursing home. It's more blessed to give than it is to receive. Number six, how does happiness happen? Number six, happiness happens as I serve others. So the next fill in the blank there is the word serve. 
Happiness happens as I serve others. Look at the scripture there in your notes. Galatians chapter 5, serve one another in love. There's another, one another passage. Serve one another in love. Rick Warren says, the world defines greatness in terms of power, possessions, prestige, and position. Jesus, however, measured greatness in terms of service, not status. God determines your greatness by how many people you serve, not by how many people serve you. In heaven, God's going to openly reward some of his most obscure and unknown servants, people we've never heard of on planet Earth, who taught emotionally disturbed children, who cleaned up after incontinent elderly, who nursed AIDS patients, and who served in thousands of other unnoticed ways. Studies have been done of, of people who engaged in at least 100 hours of volunteerism a year. Those people, 68% of them reported feeling physically healthier, 73% felt less stressed, 89% had a higher sense of well-being. Happiness happens as you serve other people. So this last week, I just decided to uh, ask some different people, hey, when you think of people who serve people, who comes to your mind? Here's some of the answers I heard. One person said, when I think of people who serve, I think of uh, Tala Marinho. She has chosen to invest her time each week with a class of three-year-olds here at Grace Fellowship. Tala knows the impact of showing up every Sunday and being intentional in greeting each child by name so that they know how important they are. That's awesome. Another person I asked said, when I think of people who serve, I think of Chris Hiller, who's passionate about equipping others seeking financial freedom by leading our Dave Ramsey Financial Peace University class. Somebody else said, when I think of people who serve, I think of Karen Coolidge, who contributes to women's Bible study as a writer, producing curriculum and biblical content that brings people into community through the transformational power of God's holy word. She labors faithfully and joyfully, producing excellent resources that she entrusts God to bless. Somebody else said, when I think of people who serve, I think of Leslie or Alvair, who serves with a wide open heart and the oil of gladness and prayer, worship, and loving his community really, really well. Somebody else said, when I think of people who serve, I think of Tay, who started coming to Grace Fellowship in January of 2023, came through the Connecting at Grace class in March, and joined the church. Recently, he began serving as a greeter and an usher because he loves Jesus, loves his church, and loves people. He has a warm smile for newcomers, and he cares about helping people feel comfortable and connected here at Grace Fellowship. That's awesome. Somebody else said, when I think of people who serve, I think of Mark Hanna. He's a spiritual dynamo who serves in men's ministry as a table leader, as a one-on-one -on -one mentor, and serves in our prophetic prayer ministry. He is a selfless man who visits those in the hospital and advocates for the underserved. Somebody else said, when I think of people who serve, I think of Greg and Stephanie Natty, who saw hungry people in unused land and dreamed up and planted our Grace Garden. It's a whole acre back here, leading many volunteers from Grace Camden Downs in the community to grow and harvest over 30,000 pounds of organic produce for Katie Christian Ministry and refugees. That's awesome. Somebody else said, when I think of people who serve, I think of Luke and Sarah Chong, who became so passionate about telling the lost about King Jesus that they started Chinese Alpha, ESL, a worship service in Mandarin, and Friends Speak. They have seen many people become baptized Christ followers and disciple makers all around the world. And then one last one, uh, one person said, when I think of people who serve, I think of Reagan Brown, who first came to Grace Fellowship in 2022 it is an undergrad student at Texas Tech University. This summer, she came up and said, I'm here for the summer, I wanna help. We paired her up with Mary Beth, a great example of servanthood herself, and she showed up every week this summer with an attitude of availability to serve wherever it was most helpful in leading people to connect with God and others as part of their Sunday experience. Wow, I could just keep going on and on and on. There are so many of you here at Grace Fellowship who serve selflessly and graciously and love on others by serving others in our midst in all these different ways. And I just say thank you, thank you, thank you. Happiness happens as you give it away. Happiness happens as you serve other people. Number seven, 
How does happiness happen? Number seven, happiness happens as I accept others. That's a -A A-C-C-E-P-T. Happiness happens as I accept others. Here comes another one another passage in your notes. Romans 15, accept one another then just as Christ accepted you. About this, Max says, happiness happens not by fixing people, but by accepting people and entrusting them into the care of God. Acceptance seeks to offer both grace and truth. And Riley Washington says the most important statement in bridge building is this. Help me understand what it's like to be you. Then sit back and listen. I heard an amazing story this week of something that happened in the Iraqi war back in 2003. Uh, Listen to this. (coughs) Brian Reed served in the United States military unit in Baghdad, Iraq in the fall of 2003. Brian and his unit went on regular street patrols to protect neighborhoods and build peace there in Iraq. It was often a thankless, fruitless assignment. Brian said his unit battled low morale daily. An exception came in the form of a church service his men stumbled upon. The American soldiers got out of their military vehicles, intrigued by the sight of a wrought iron nativity, three wise men from the east advertising to all who passed by that this was a Christian gathering in a Christian church in Iraq. Brian and his men, armed and armored to the teeth, entered the facility. It was filled with Arabic-speaking Coptic Christians singing and praising God with a worship team and PowerPoint slides. The Americans did not understand a word, but they recognized the image on the screen, a depiction of Jesus. The language was foreign, but the observances were not. Fellowship, prayer, the teaching, and the breaking of bread. When they saw the American soldiers, the Coptic Christians invited them to partake in the Lord's Supper with them. The soldiers removed their helmets and received the sacraments. Then they joined the Iraqis in a processional as they made their way out of the sanctuary and into a courtyard that ended at the foot of a large wooden cross. Afterward, they all smiled, laughed, shook hands, and prayed again. There was peace in the Middle East for just a moment in Iraq as Americans and Iraqis accepted one another. That's pretty powerful. Number eight, happiness happens as I admonish others. This one's interesting. So the fill in the blank there is the word admonish. Happiness happens as I admonish others. Look at the Colossians 3 scripture there in your notes. The Bible says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching, and here it is, and admonishing one another. There's another one another. Admonishing one another in all wisdom. Look at what Max says about this. He says, admonishment is high octane encouragement. The word literally means putting into the mind. To admonish is to deposit truth into another person's mind, thoughts. It might take the form of discipline, encouragement, or affirmation. It may be commendation or correction. Above all, admonishment is truth spoken into a difficult circumstance. It inserts the chlorine tablet of truth into the algae of difficulty. Admonishment speaks up. Scripture-based admonishment is like antibacterial cream. We may not know how it heals a wound. We just know it does. Strugglers don't need our opinions. They don't need our philosophies on suffering. They don't need someone to distract them with idle conversation about weather or politics. Strugglers need someone to admonish them with truth. So make it your practice to say, I know a Bible verse that might help and then quote the Bible verse. Make it your practice to say, a scripture that means much to me is, and then share the scripture. Max tells the story of encountering a 10-year-old boy after church one Sunday. The boy's name was Joshua. His mother, who was standing next to him, explained that Joshua's father was no longer a part of his son's life. The boy looked at me, said Max, through sad, tear-moistened eyes. I squatted down eye level with Joshua, and I asked him, do you know the story of your namesake, Joshua, in the Bible? 
The boy nodded yes. Max said, you will do what Joshua did, I admonished. You will bring down Jericho's walls and you will pray prayers of great faith. The boy wasn't quite sure how to respond, but his mom, she was wiping her eyes. Biblical admonishment touches lives. Happiness happens as you give it away. Number nine. Happiness happens as I forgive others. So the next fill in the blank there is the word forgive. Happiness happens as I forgive others. Look at the scripture there in your notes. Ephesians chapter four. Forgive one another. There's another one another. Forgive one another as God in Christ forgave you. Look at what Max says about this. He says, resentment sucks satisfaction from the soul. Bitterness consumes it. But a step in the direction of forgiveness is a decisive step towards happiness. Forgiveness does not pardon the offense, excuse the misdeed, or ignore it. Forgiveness is not necessarily reconciliation. A reestablished relationship with a transgressor is not essential or always even possible. Forgiveness is simply the act of changing your attitude toward the offender. It's moving from a desire to harm the other person towards an openness to be at peace. A step in the direction of forgiveness is a decisive step towards happiness. We forgive because Christ has forgiven us. Do you remember back in 2015 when we saw on our televisions and our computer screens the horrific martyrdom of 21 Christians as ISIS took 21 Christ followers with those black bags over their head and beheaded them on video. It was horrific. Two of those martyred Christians were brothers and their mother was interviewed on Egyptian public television. And to the shock of everyone, the mother said, I forgive ISIS for killing my boys. Like, how could she do that? Because she knew that Christ had forgiven her. Yeah. Last one, number 10. How does happiness happen? Happiness happens as I love others. So the last fill in the blank there in your notes is the word love. Happiness happens as I love others. So let's look, look this scripture up in our own Bibles. So if you're in Acts, go to the left till you get to the gospel of John chapter 13. John chapter 13, to the left of Acts. John chapter 13. So John 13 is where Jesus washes his disciples' feet, right? And when he's done washing his disciples' feet, at the end of the chapter, he makes this statement in verse 34. John chapter 13, verse uh, 34. Jesus says, A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, just as I have loved you. You also are to love one another. By this, all people will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Look at what Max says about this verse. He says, the final phrase of John 13, 34 is the essential one. Love one another as I have loved you. We don't love people because people are lovable. <laughs> people can be cranky, stubborn, selfish, and cruel. We love people for this reason. We have come to know and experience and believe the love that God has for us. We are beneficiaries of an unexpected, undeserved, and undeniable gift, the love of God. It is only by receiving our Father's agape love that we can discover an agape love for other people. Be loved, then love. We cannot love if we aren't first loved. Just as hurt people hurt people, well, loved people love people. So let God love you. Receive his love. And the ultimate expression of God's love for you is the sacrifice of his son, his only son, on the cross 
as your substitute and as my substitute. And you receive God's forgiveness and you receive God's love by receiving God's Son, Jesus, into your life. And receiving God's Son can be as simple as saying, Jesus, I believe and I receive. Jesus, I believe that you died on the cross for me and that you rose from the dead. And Jesus, I receive you into my life. I receive your forgiveness of sins. I receive your gift of eternal life. Make that your prayer. I believe and I receive. And then when you do that, the next step is to go public with that belief through water baptism. So watch this video about baptism. Watch this. of change wash over my head I do this because I know who I am I do this because I'm forgiven I do this because he rose I know no water can change me but this water is a sign that change has occurred in my heart my life will never be the same so now I'm proclaiming it to the world and just as Jesus was buried, I will be buried. Just as Jesus rose, I will rise. Faith, hope, love, none are greater than these. I have faith that Jesus is who he says he is. I have hope in his resurrection and his everlasting power. His endless love has forever changed my life. Yeah, so tell Jesus, I believe, I receive, then go public with that. And if, uh, if, if you've never gone public with your faith and you're ready to do that, we're going to have our next immersion baptism on September the 10th. That's a Sunday right after second service. I put sign-up information there in your notes. All right, there you got it. Ten one another Bible passages. Woo, we went through ten Bible passages together. Outlining ten ways to increase your happiness by giving happiness away. And so I want to end with the seven-day happiness challenge. Come on, who will take this with me? The seven-day happiness challenge. I double-dog dare you. Look at it in your notes. The happiness challenge. For the next seven days, with God's help and God's power, I'm going to intentionally give happiness away. Specifically, I'm going to seek to alter the joy level of 14 other people by intentionally putting into practice one of the 10 one another passages with them. And then I signed my name to that before God and said, God, will you help me do that? So I just gave you a toolbox full of 10 one another's, 10 different ways of giving away happiness. And the seven day happiness challenge is that over the next seven days, you would use that toolbox to give happiness away to 14 people. Who's willing to do this with me? I'm in. Who, who else? Who, who would do this uh, with me? Give it a try. Uh, and to help me, I'm actually going to keep a log on my phone uh, each time I do it, just so I can kind of hold myself accountable to doing uh, 14. All right, I want to invite you to a time of prayer uh, right now. So don't leave yet. I want us to pray. And you can pray right there in your seat. I found it powerful to get out of my seat and to come and kneel at this prayer altar railing all along the front here and just get on my knees with God. Either way, would you spend this time praying? If you come to the prayer altar, we'll leave you alone unless you'd like one of us to pray with you. Uh, and the symbol for that is to cup your hands in front of you while you're kneeling at the prayer altar. Uh, we'd love uh, to pray with you. So please don't leave. Stay and pray. And as you pray, either in your seat or here at the prayer altar, would you ask for God's help and power to give away happiness to other people? 
And maybe God would bring to your mind specific people that you're going to do that with this week. A person you're going to encourage. A person you're going to pray with. A person you're going to forgive. And ask for God's help uh, to do that. Or maybe you need to pray about something we haven't even talked about this morning. Maybe it's to pray for a, a friend or a loved one who's, um, who's, who's sick uh, or who needs the Lord. Uh, this is your time to pray. This is my favorite time in our whole service. Let's do some business with God.